So the operation obviously starts off with obtaining um, a rest of the heart and then the aorta is transected at the distal clamp and then the root is inspected and starting off with the mobilizing of um, the non-coronary sinus and excising the tissue there. It's important to leave a good cuff at uh, that non-coronary sinus. Then the principle is going to be always making the bicuspid valve symmetrical and so tension sutures to maintain uh, tension on the commissure is important and here some silk sutures are being used to put tension on uh, those commissures. The other thing that I use is an inclusion technique for the coronary artery so you don't excise the buttons as you would say on a reimplantation operation, but leave them uh, in place and you'll see how that becomes later. So here we now give antegrade osteocardioplegia to get cardiac arrest. Uh, since this was a patient with aortic valve regurgitation and a regurgitant uh, valve. I usually have a retrograde cardioplegia available on these patients. So one of the first steps is to free up the RAFE and I excise that as much as possible and here we're just measuring the length of the leaflets and so inevitably you end up using the largest graph possible whether that's a 34 or 38. Then the next step is to put in the Cabral sutures to improve the uh, intercommissural angle to narrow that down and improve apposition of the leaflets. So for the uh, Cabral sutures, put them more into the aortic tissue, not too close to the annulus, and tie those into position. And notice there's a small fenestration there at that commissure, but that won't be a problem once you narrow the intercommissural angle. And there you see tension on that Cabral suture and on the other one. And now you can begin to work on making sure you have symmetry of the two leaflets. And so they can see there's a bit of prolapse potentially there of the middle of the conjoint uh, leaflet. So um, the next part then is to start preparing the route uh, for the remodeling operation. We've got the Cabral sutures in place and then dealing with um, any minor fenestrations. That sort of fenestration really isn't a problem at all. You can certainly be more lenient with fenestrations in young people because it's so much more important that you keep the valve for them. So you see there the edge of the tube graft and you cut the openings um, to the tube graft and make sure that the openings for the commissures are high. In other words, you don't want any tension on the annulus in the middle of the sinuses. You want all the tension to be on the commissures and the apex of the commissures within the root. So there you just briefly saw tube graft that had been cut to accommodate that. Then we put in these um, Gore-Tex sutures at the leading edge of the commissures and we're going to do an over and over figure of eight suture there and then hitch it up on the outside of the aorta to bring the height of the leaflets to a higher level. And we've shown that this improves the durability of repairs long term, not only for three leaflet valves, but also for bicuspid valves. And notice that's about three, four millimeters higher on the aorta. And most of the time I, I put a pledged suture onto that just to make sure it doesn't pull through uh, the aorta because the tension is fairly significant on these Gore-Tex sutures.
I used to use Ethibond, but I stopped using that because I had one patient where the repair failed and the Ethibond had tied, uh, had torn through the leaflet, but after I started using uh, Gore-Tex, uh, that hasn't occurred. And maybe it's because it's a slight elasticity or it's less of a cutting suture, uh, it certainly seems to work better to use Gore-Tex for these uh, sutures. And then because there's a lot of tension on, on the suture and there's a risk of unraveling, I'll put some cl a clip on that um, knot just so it won't unravel. So there you see how that leaflet's been hitched up to a higher level. And we're gonna then do that on the opposite end. And again, we're working towards a nice symmetrical bicuspid valve. So if you look at that suture, the first bite tends to go a bit further out on the leaflet, and then the second one is closer to the aortic wall. And I will sometimes adjust uh, a prolapse in the leaflets by moving the place where I implant this from either side. So in, in this case, I'm putting it just a bit more towards the right, in other words, uh, to the non-conjoint leaflet to see if I can hitch up that leaflet a bit higher uh, depending on how much prolapse that there is or whether it's an incomplete leaflet um, and maybe avoid having to put a plication suture in the middle of the leaflet. In this case we're going to need uh, to do that so just put too much prolapse on the conjoint leaflet between the left and right uh, cusps and again just a clip on that to stop it from coming unraveled and um, we'll now have a good look at things here and see how it's symmetrical leaflets are. So using two forceps I, I do that a lot to check on the symmetry of the leaflet during operation. Another point that I've made before is for whatever reason the thickest part of this conjoint leaflet tends to be towards the right side and so it's typically not right in the middle of the leaflet that you do your plication. Uh, it's a bit more towards the right coronary artery osteum and although I typically do a running suture for an incomplete fusion, in this case, because it's just a little prolapse, uh, all you need to do is tighten that up for by a millimeter or two. I use a horizontal mattress suture, and that's what I typically use um, as the finishing, even for a largely incomplete leaflet. I think the security of that as far as tearing out is much better than just an over and over suture alone. And again, uh, this suture is an Ethibond, it's not a, a Gore-Tex uh, suture. So there's application now. And there's the symmetry to the leaflets. You'll see the heart moving every now and again. We're doing a research study on ventilation of lungs during cardiopulmonary bypass. So next uh, is to bring down then that beveled tube graft. And as I emphasize, this is the biggest that's available. So I usually start somewhere near the wraith, the tissue is a bit thicker there and stronger. And that's more or less the middle of uh, the position on the tube graft also. So usually about three or four rungs of the graft. So that gathers in some extra material to reduce the bleeding and the, the anastomosis of the annulus, but I'll show you later how to solve the problem if there is any bleeding at the annular suture line, or for that matter, from the two osteo, left and right.
So make sure you're in good tissue on the annulus. You don't want to buckle the leaflets or retract the leaflets, but you want to be in good strong tissue too. So initially these are loose sutures and then we'll parachute that down. As I emphasized earlier, make sure that there's no tension on this middle part of the, the graft. All your tension must be at the commissures. And so now we're coming to the commissures and notice how I put the, the needle through the Cabral uh, pledget. So that original pledget for the Cabral, we put it through that and that means that you have a circumferential anchoring of the annulus. And here again, this is now at the other commissure between the non coronary and the left. Make sure that you've got lots of tension on that commissure and then put it through that pledget for the figure of eight a suspension suture so that you've got lots of tension on the commissure. And then you go back to the non coronary sinus, usually start about the middle. Notice that there's a fair amount of tissue here on that remaining sinus that I leave behind. So the more overlapping tissue you have, the better the apposition and the less likely you're going to have significant bleeding here. Tuck the graft inside the aorta. That's a principle always for aortic surgery. Tuck the graft inside the, the aorta and your advance in tissue spacing should always be less than the depth of the sutures that you're putting in. And then we're going to do the same thing here. So tucking it in there. And then again, we're going to put the final sutures here through that cabral stitch pledget to make sure that we have a circumferential strengthening of the annulus. So the tension on the annulus is taken up by the graft and then by the cabral sutures. And where I've seen remodeling operations fail, it's been at the commissures. And so that's why it's important that you, in a sense, close this off so it's not a potential site for later stretching. And so there we tie off those two sutures at the apex of the commissures. And there's the root as it looks now. As you see, it's nice and symmetrical. And then you can test that with the cardioplegia administrator crushed into position and a Fogarty clamp. And then you can see if there's any bleeding. Obviously, here at the non coronary sinus, it's very easy to put in additional sutures if you need to and then you can look at the conjoint leaflet sinuses too. So here we're making the openings for the right and the left osteo. And as I said this is an inclusion technique. Apologies for my headlight getting in the way there. And what I try and do is cover the old suture line, the first suture line at the annulus with this uh, suture also. Now obviously because it's a remodeling operation without free buttons, I don't um, put a uh, 
Teflon donut at these Ostia. So the principle with all buttons is you start on the upstream side and then work around the button posterior wall first. Now here it looks a bit tricky but we're going to go behind that suture to get around this ostium. see as you go around this make becomes easier uh, to put the button into position. It's important also that you don't go into the ostium of the coronary artery because that's very fragile tissue and you don't want to put a lot of tension on that. So once you've done the posterior wall do the anterior part of the button. And again, you see, you use a generous amount of the aorta for that anastomosis. finally complete the inclusion technique. I'm not a fan of inclusion technique type of anastomoses, but I do use it for these remodelings and for homographs. And then again, as I said, the principle is to put your upstream suture first, then come into the ostium from outside in, Posterior wall first, and there's some overlap again with your annular suture line there just to strengthen that. So once you completed that, um, check with that there's osteo open, check your valve. And then you can run integrate cardioplegia into the root and down the caries, clamp the graft with a Fogarty clamp, and now you can check for hemostasis again. And there's slight bleeding there, and I'll show you then how to deal with that. And then once again, check the non carry sinus. So using the inclusion technique, it's very easy then to get hemostasis if there is any bleeding here by putting a couple of horizontal mattress sutures through the edge of the coronary ostium button and through the aortic wall and you just seal that whole area off and there you see that sealed off and then you do your distal anastomosis in the usual manner as I said before take the tube graft inside the aorta always make the depth of your suture line into the aorta or the graft deeper than the distance you advance and then this is now coming up on the left hand side of the anastomosis since this is a very big graft and the distal aorta isn't that big you have to tailor that a bit to match the Water. And so we'll do that as part of that procedure. Typically, I don't use a atrioventricular vent uh, as you saw for this, although for the reimplantations, I think it's critical to do that because you're using that 
or checking on the competence of the three leaflet valve. As a general rule, I prefer to do a remodeling for bicuspid valves because that puts tension on the leaflets as I showed you, whereas with the three leaflet valve reimplantation, but sometimes I will use a reimplantation technique. So there you have that uh, repair, checking for uh, hemostasis, and hemostasis should really never be a problem with using this inclusion type of technique for remodeling. I hope you found that useful, the technique shown in this video. Thank you for watching it.